Good morning. Let's prepare our hearts before the Lord. to our welcome and announcements. Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome everybody here today and to the people who are watching us on the internet. We also want to welcome Pastor Tim coming back to our pulpit today. We want to thank the... Um, South Portland Church of the Nazarene for helping us as we are going through the transition of getting a new pastor. And we also want to say that we're excited that Pastor Brent will be here uh, Sunday, November 27th. Um, but we want to keep him in our prayers um, because um, the transition and the move um, we're also going to be helping him um, with the furnishings of the um, for the parsonage. Um, so he's going to be providing us a list of things that um, we can help him with, and and so just keep that in your prayers. Also, our faith promise convention is coming up on Sunday, October thirty. Um, there's a sign-up sheet in the back um, so you can sign up for really side dishes. Um, we appreciate that. And also we are looking for help for the Salvation Army, the ringing of the bell. Um, that will be through November 12th through December 24th. Um, and we'd like you to pray about that, to see if that would be something that you would be interested in. And um, check the information out on the back. Sign up for um, dishes out on the back, um, bulletin board. And don't forget that we have prayer meeting on Tuesdays and because um, we've got a lot of things to pray for. So come Tuesday. That's at uh, 7 o'clock. Any other questions? Announcements? Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. Amen. Please let your heart be in a place where you can receive God's word. As we have a call to worship today from Psalm 68. <clears throat> may God arise. May his enemies be scattered. May his foes flee before him. 
May you blow them away like smoke as wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God, but may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Sing to God, sing in praise of his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him. His name is the Lord. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing. But the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. When you, God, went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness... The earth shook, the heavens poured down rain before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. You gave abundant showers, O God. You refreshed your weary inheritance. Your people settled in it, and from your bounty, God, you provided for the poor. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand with us and worship together. In song. Oh 
love you, Lord Jesus. And we're very grateful for your doings, which explain how we could even be this far along. And we have heard great news of good things to come. And we owe it all to you. And we give you thanks. Amen. Please be seated. We invite our ushers to come forward and give us opportunity. We can also worship through giving of offerings. Amen. Listen for our lessons today. Good morning. morning. I'll be reading today from James 1, 19 through 27. It can be found in the Pew Bible on page 1881. The passage is uh, titled and Pew Bible is listening and doing. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For as man's, for man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth, and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen for the wor- to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says, is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror, and then after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets wh- what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law and gives that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Praise be to God for his word. Good morning. I'd like to share with you Jeremiah verse 31, I mean Jeremiah 31, verses 27 to 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the offspring of men and of animals, just as I watched over them to uproot and tear down and to overthrow, destroy, and bring disaster, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. In those days, people will no longer say, 
The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for his own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, his own teeth will be set on edge. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After that time, I will put my law in their minds and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying, know the Lord because they will know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. We invite you to stand with us and sing our hymn, which will bring in the message today. our message today. It's a blessing to be back here with you this morning. Very glad to be here. Uh, I want to tell you a story about a couple weeks ago. I was taking my youngest son uh, into the car. We had uh, just left from uh, his daycare and we were uh, getting in the vehicle and he asked me a question. And I can't, I can't really remember what he was asking for, as four-year-olds are wont to do. So, you know, he wanted something. And initially I just said, I said, no, no, you don't need that right now. Come on, let's get in the car. 
And he said, please, please, can I have this? Or please, can we go here? I can't remember what it was. He said, please, can I, can I do this? And I said, no, Alex, we just need to go in the car. We're getting ready to go. And he said, but Dad, I really want this. And, and please, can, can we do this? And, and about the third time, I'm thinking to myself, wow, he's, he's asking really nicely. <laughs> for, you, know, you know, three- and four-year-olds, when they want something, usually it's... it's melt down right away if you say no. And I'm like, he's doing really good. He's doing great about this. And he said, and so, so he asks again as well as he can. And, I, and now I'm thinking to myself, why did I say no again? <laughs> like, I, I'm thinking, was it a good reason for why I said no? And, and then finally, um, he, he starts, he gets in the van and he turns to me and he says, Dad, uh, I'd really like that. I said, well, why don't you get in your seat and we'll get buckled in and we'll try it. And I can see by about this third and fourth time that, you know, he's starting to build up. He's trying his best to communicate his desire for what he wants, and he's doing the best he can to do it. And, uh, and then after he gets, gets seated and he gets buckled in, I say to him, I said, Alex, you did so great asking. Thank you for that. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and, I, and, I, and let him do that. And I've been racking my brain over the last few days, so I'm thinking, what was it that he even asked for? I mean, this is how insignificant it was, right? That uh, I can't even remember what it was he was asking for. But I know my thought at the time was, uh, usually when we say no, it's like we want to stick to it, right? Because we want them to learn to understand that, you know, no uh, means you can't. And, and particularly if they throw a fit, it definitely means no. Like, like that, that's easy. But when everything goes well and he keeps asking and he's nice about it, all of a sudden I found myself asking, you know what? Was it really that important for me to say no? Maybe it was just out of convenience I said it, and then out of, well, I said no, i got to stick with it. And then, and then after a while, I was like, I don't even know why I'm saying no anymore. Um, and so, I mean, this is, this is kind of a parable. This is kind of a story, if you will, about, I think, uh, some of uh, our, our life and our faithfulness as well, that uh, we go to God, and while He knows us, and we can go to Him in any state, in, in any way at all, He knows who we are, but we can go to Him again and again and say, God, this is really what my need is. And he can respond to that. And that uh, our God desires to uh, raise us up and to build us up and has indeed uh, his best, uh, our best interests in mind for us. But uh, one of the things, of course, where, of course, the analogy breaks down is God isn't worried about, you know, uh, if, I, if I say yes or if I answer this prayer, am I a good enough parent or something like that, you know, like, like uh, you know, I, I would do. He, does, he doesn't have those kinds of doubts. He's a, good, he's a good God without, you know, having to wonder if he is. Um, and so, uh, but this, this story is echoed in Luke chapter 18. Right? This is kind of my modern retelling of the parable that Jesus tells in Luke chapter 18. And so I'd like to read that for you today. Luke chapter 18. Feel free to stand as we read the, in honor of Scripture today. Luke chapter 18, verse uh, 1 through 8. says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. And for some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I'll see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Amen. You can be seated. Thank you. So th this, is, this is the parable that Jesus tells, right? You, you can already kind of see kind of the similarities from the story that I told that just happened a, a couple weeks ago. Uh, this widow uh, has been coming to a judge asking for assistance. And what we heard in uh, the psalm that we read today and uh, from the passage in James uh, that was read for us, you know, what we hear is that God has a special place and a calling for us to take care of, uh, of, of the widows. This is a part of uh, our faithfulness from the Old Testament to the New Testament. This is a very important part of uh, who they are. And they recognize right away in this story that he tells that this judge who does not fear God nor care what people thinks is someone who whose judgments are going to be based out of self-concern, and they're going to be based off of uh, what he deems best without any care for the person who's talking to him. In fact, when he finally 
says, okay, I'm going to give her what she wants. It's so that she doesn't reach out and smack me because I've been so obstinate. I mean, this is literally what he says. And so uh, and Jesus says, if you look at this judge, this corrupt, this, this selfish judge, and we know that we have a judge who is not selfish, who is not just trying to uh, uh, get his own way, but actually cares for his people, how much more will he listen if we keep praying? Let's do this. This is a parable ultimately not about God as judge, but that last statement, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will we be the people who are praying faithfully again and again in preparation for when God comes? I mean, this is actually turns... It kind of turns the whole nation of uh, the notion of prayer on its head. You, you think that here this story is about asking again and again and again, and sooner or later, you know, like we wear God down and he, and he answers us. But he says to us the purpose of prayer and the purpose of becoming a praying people is we are getting ready for when the Son of God comes back. We are getting ready for the return of Christ so that we can live with him and know who he is and know God and desire to be with him. In fact, the passage of Scripture leading right up to Luke at chapter 18 is a passage where Jesus is talking about uh, the coming kingdom of God. And he talks about when, when he comes back. It's the passage that uh, most often gets re uh, returned to when people want to talk about end time. When he says, one will be taken and another will be left. That's in Luke 17. And so right off the bat, people are, are wondering, okay, what's going to happen? And, and when is this going to happen? Because they are surrounded by evil. They're surrounded by evil powers. They look around at their present evil age and they go, God, this world is falling apart. When are you going to do something? And so they've been praying about this. And so we come to Luke 18 and he says, don't stop praying about this. As the people of God and as the church, we are called to be faithful and continuous in our prayers, knowing that God will answer. And whether that answer is to come in the future at the return of Christ, or whether God will answer us now in this present age, we know without a doubt God hears our prayers, and He will answer, and He will vindicate us, and He will bring forgiveness, and He will also bring judgment where judgment is necessary. And He will act where we are needed. Uh, I want to say uh, this morning... Um, Good job, church, for being faithful uh, over these many, many months. I remember uh, just my second time preaching here, I think it was. Uh, there was uh, a message uh, I gave, and I uh, called on you to uh, uh, not only be faithful, but to be bold to believe that God has a plan for you. God has a future for you, and not to settle, and not, to, uh, uh, and not just to kind of go with whatever might be easiest, but to trust that God has a plan for you. And you have waited 14 months now, it seems, for a new pastor. And you have waited, and you have prayed, and you have a wonderful pastor who's coming. Uh, I, I had the opportunity actually to run into him. I went to a theology conference uh, about a month or two ago in Kansas City where he's coming out of as he comes out of seminary. And I got a chance to meet him as well. And I, I'm really happy uh, for you and for your patience. God has answered your prayer. And I understand it is, it is hard in that transition time. The first church I went to waited 18 months, about the same amount of time. And, and I got to see that kind, of, that kind of just exhaustion when I first showed up. That kind of we've been waiting and waiting. God is one who answers faithful and persistent prayer, and he's done that for you now as well, and you're going to get a chance to see that. But of course, Jesus' call for us to be faithful in prayer is one that continues, because there's going to be future needs for the church, and there's going to be future ministries that you're going to be involved in, and there are going to be things that happen, of course, in your life where you say, God, I need your hand in this moment. There's something that's going on right now I need your help with. And perhaps God will respond here, or perhaps we are asking for the patience and preparation for when Christ comes again. And indeed, the dead are raised, and sickness is healed, and, and, uh, and evil is squashed, and, and He judges uh, the living and the dead. But perhaps God will bring victory now, in our present moments, and we will find that to be the case. What I love about this passage of Scripture is it, a passage, it is a passage about encouraging us to prayer. I think the biggest misreading sometimes we have on, on this is when we say the reason God hasn't answered yet is we haven't been persistent enough. I really don't like that because I think it kind of puts it all on us and kind of like makes victims out of us when it seems like God is delaying his answer. What Jesus says to us and about this widow is be persistent. God is a good God. And he has heard you, and he will answer. Uh, 
as, as, he, as he asks us to pray, uh, the question then for us is, well, how do we pray? How do we do this? How do we become the kind of people who will be ready when Christ comes again? Or will be ready to receive the grace that God might give to us while we wait and in answer to our prayers? How, how do we do this? One of the great things about um, Luke when he writes his Gospels, when he puts parables together and tells these stories, he, he often means for them to inform one another. I just told you what happened beforehand when Jesus is telling them a story about how, you know, you won't know when he's coming back. There'll be someone there and then there won't be someone there. And he says, uh, you won't know, you know, it'll come as a surprise. That just came beforehand. And so pray, because God is coming back. And then in, uh, right after this passage of Scripture, if you have your Bible still open to Luke chapter 18, verse 9 and on, he tells the parable, parable of a Pharisee and a tax collector. Put this in modern day terms, the parable of the person who's been in church all their life and the parable of the person who is uh, uh, just perhaps praying for the first time in their life. And he says, uh, one of them goes up on a hill and prays and says, I'm so glad I'm not like that sinner over there. And the sinner goes up to the mountain and beats his chest and says, God, uh, have mercy on me. I am a sinner and I have wronged you. And he says to his disciples, the one who beat his chest in humility is the one who went home justified. And so how do we pray as we pray continually? We've got to pray with humility. We've got to understand that, that while God, God may be patient in answering, God may not have the answer that we want, but either way, we are going to pray and say, God, whatever your will is for my life and whatever you would have me do, this is what I want to be about. Even after this parable, he, he kind of talks about this, this prayer in action. After he tells this parable, Luke chapter 18 uh, continues on by saying, children come up to Jesus and they want to talk to him and disciples usher them away. And... Uh, and push them away. And, and Jesus says to them, well, no, let the children come to me. You've got to have faith like these children. Let the children come to me. It's, it's like they just forgot the parable about how, how to be humble. Uh, he, he said, he said you've got to let them come to you. So in prayer, we've got to be humble. And in prayer, we also have to have our minds and our thoughts for the least among those. Uh, at least among us. In that time, of course, the children were considered very, uh, very insignificant. But we have to have in our prayers a mind for those who, uh, uh, who are worse off, who have gone through sorrow, who have gone through hardship, who have gone through tough times. No wonder, as some of the passages we've read uh, have encouraged us to take care of orphans and widows and the like. We have to care and love for, the, uh, uh, for all those whom God loves and cares for. And afterwards, in Luke chapter 18, after the story about the children, he tells the story of a man. Uh, uh, Luke tells the story of a man who comes to Jesus and says, uh, Jesus, I've been following these commands. I've, I've been following everything you're saying. And he says, is there anything else? And Jesus says uh, to sell what he has. And this rich young man uh, goes away dejected because he has a lot. And prayer reminds us... Uh, to be sacrificial in our lives, to be sacrificial in our giving of our time, of our resources, to be able to say, God, what I have is yours. Uh, prayer uh, prepares us to say, uh, God, I recognize the, the temporary nature of this, this life you've given me, and I want to be a blessing to those around me, and I want to be able to be a good steward and communicator of your grace and, what you, and your blessing in our life. And so I, I just look at the rest of Luke 18, and I, I just find myself th thinking, wow, when Jesus calls us to pray faithfully, he kind of kind of lays out for us, doesn't he? Like, like some of what this faithful prayer might look like. We're going to be humble. We're going to care about those uh, uh, among us who, who off, often aren't cared for enough. And we are going to uh, pray in such a way that we might say, God, how would you still be able to use me? And not just have prayers of supplication and say, God, give me more, give me more. And this is, this is the story Jesus tells for us, that we would be a people who would be faithful in prayer. And so as I, as I look over kind of uh, uh, the, the last year, and I look over even the faithfulness that I see right here that's, that's being exhibited, that your pastor is coming in just another month, uh, and I think this is, this is a sign of God's faithfulness. And I know that we need to be able to see those for what it is because there is going to be times when you're wondering about the next ministry or when you're wondering about the next event that happens in your life. God, what are you going to do now? And we will pray. And we'll pray for God to work. And maybe He acts and works in the way we, we want, but what we will be doing is we will be forming and shaping our lives to say, God, whatever happens, I want to be faithful in the midst of it. 
because I know in the end you're going to be faithful and we're going to be with you for all eternity. And this is who we want to be, right? We want to be people who have learned to kneel before our God. We want to be a people who have learned to say, I'm going to follow him and trust and hope that he is the God who indeed has never left us nor forsaken us. I'm going to ask the band to come forward. In fact, we're going to uh, sing a song. It's uh, Seek Ye First, the Kingdom of God. And, and we just want to go into an attitude of prayer during this song. So, so sing with, with your hearts, just open up to God, or t- take a posture of prayer. But let's, let, us, uh, let, let today be a reminder to be consistent and to begin a path where we're going to say, we're going to be faithful in this no matter what. And I know uh, uh, in the process of waiting for God to answer, sometimes it gets, gets rough and it gets difficult. But what we're going to say is we're going to seek God, we're going to seek His kingdom, and we're going to trust Him along the way. Let's sing this together. Standing fresh. together. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, asking and desiring, Lord, that your will would be done in our lives. Heavenly Father, we we come before you thankful for ways in which you do answer our prayers, ways in which uh, you hear the repeated prayers of our heart and the concerns that we have. You come and you respond and you answer. Heavenly Father, I thank you that in all things you have already provided the answer for any prayer request that we might have. That you have sent your Son to be our Savior, to save us from sin and the consequences of of sin and death. And Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that that remedy that uh, you have provided is at hand. And Heavenly Father, today uh, I know that we will have many more concerns as we await the return of Your Son, many more concerns that, Lord, we will bring to You. And I'm thankful, Lord, that when You answer, it is to give a foretaste of the kingdom to come. It is not because You have gotten annoyed. It is because You are a good God who has said, let me give you a glimpse today of what it is going to be like in the future. And so, Heavenly Father, today we come to You in prayer, Lord, that your spirit would work in our hearts and in our lives, that we would become the Christians and followers that would be pleasing to you, that we would become the people who would be ready to receive your Son when He comes, and that we would become the kind of people that when we get to heaven we can say, yeah, I know what it's like to be in the presence of God and how great it is indeed. Heavenly Father, Help us, shape us, mold us to be your people. Thank you for telling us that we could seek after you, that we could ask, that we could knock. Thank you for the answers you have given us. And we pray today that you would continue to guide us and shape us to be the people you'd have us to be. And now we desire, Lord, to to be more like your son, and we will pray the prayer that uh, he taught us to pray. Let's pray together.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. We remember this morning on the night in which Jesus was betrayed that he took bread and after giving thanks he broke it and he said this is my body which is given for you. And also he took the cup and uh, he gave thanks to God for it and said this is my blood which is shed for you. And so we come to the table today in remembrance of what Christ has done for us and we come of course to follow in his steps to say we want to be as faithful to our God as Christ has been. And we know and we trust that God will be as faithful to us as He was to His Son. That He will raise us up if raising up is what needs to happen. He will be with us. And we will look forward to the return of Christ. And we will be faithful until that day. Would you come in faithfulness and receive the elements this morning? This is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for you. Take and eat this in remembrance and be thankful.
And this is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you for, for, for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink this in remembrance. Uh, let's sing the hymn together. Take time to be holy. It's number 512. As you go to prayer, may the Holy Spirit guide you in all humility, and may you find as you go before Him that not only has He heard your prayers, but He is guiding you and shaping you and helping you to be the Christ follower He has called you to be. Amen.